Hey there everybody and welcome to the basketball edition of Inside the Vandals. I'm Madison McCord, joining me this week and every week is Idaho men's coach Don Berlin. Coach, thanks for stopping by. Well, it's good to be here. It's good to get the show started again yeah, this year. I'm looking get, forward to it. Get back into it. Coach, let's go and take a look way back here. Start of the season, start of whack play, the start of everything. What have been the biggest challenges that you guys have faced so far, especially with having so many key players so young in the system? Well, that's always a challenge. You know, we've had we've quite a few new guys here, and, and getting the, the old guys and the new guys to mesh is always the challenge that you have. And every team is different. You know, this team is different than last year's team. Uh, this team is different than the, the, my first couple teams. So trying to figure out who can do what and how things go. And then you always got to deal with some injuries. And, and you know, we've had a, a young man had to go home for Christmas because his mother got sick. So the team and the dynamics of the team always change. So what you got to do is, is constantly work to put your team together. And sometimes teams come together faster than other teams. And, and right now in the season, I really think we're starting to play our best basketball. It hasn't shown in wins, but we, we, we've been right there. All we've got to do is finish a couple close games. As you mentioned, we're really early in the WAC season. It's an 18-game WAC this year, five games into it. Let's go back to non-conference. You guys had some really tough battles there. Obviously, some games you want back. Montana comes to mind. Uh, and then a few ones where you guys really played hard at New Mexico, at UTEP. Give us your thoughts on non-conference and really how that prepared you coming into this year's WAC. Well, first and foremost, toughest non-conference schedule I've had since we've been here. Uh, you know, we, we, we drop a, 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 our first two home games right out the box, Wright State and Montana. Tough, tough losses, uh, you know, especially the Montana game, being up 15 there with about seven or eight to play and, and not getting that one done. Uh, but then, then, then to rebound and play pretty well against a good Green Bay team, go and win at Eastern Washington, uh, play really solid game at Washington State and at UTEP, both on the road, both go right down to the wire, can't finish uh, the game, play very good at a tough, tough New Mexico uh, play. So I felt like the preseason ha has been really challenging. I think our guys have gotten a lot better, they've gotten a lot tougher, they've gotten a lot stronger. We've played in some hostile env environments and hopefully that'll prepare us for WAC play and the WAC tournament play. So now you started WAC play this year, Coach, on the road in some ways that that can be considered a death sentence they almost hand you the shovel to dig a grave there three games on the road you go to seattle you get a tough win against a good team coached by a great coach in cameron dollar then you head down to san jose a team that's fast james kinney running all over the place this year you guys get two straight wins there talk about those games and how that really propelled the team here in to start off well it was great to start whack play uh like that uh like you said seattle you um cameron's done a great job for a long period of time they they make the game fast uh i thought we went over there and played a really good game. It was a nip and tuck game, and then Rob Harris kind of breaks free, makes three three pointers down the stretch there, and we end up winning that ball game. It was great to see Rob do that uh, in Seattle, where he's from. A bunch of his family was there, so it was great to see him seal the victory. Then we then we go the next week to San Jose and, and play a very good San Jose team, probably George's best team. George Nesman, the coach at San Jose, his best team since I've been there. Uh, they came in after sweeping. The Texas trip, uh, they were playing very well, and we had just a great defensive performance, uh, holding to under 30% from the field, 18% uh, from the three-point line, just played extremely well. We had a number of guys step up. Mike McChristian played very well in that game, and it's close to his home, not far, about 40 miles uh, to Mike's home from there, so I was happy to see him play well. So I was happy with just to start the league 2-0, and and both of them on the road, those were a good start for us. So now before I get into Utah State, I do want to talk lineup, because you just mentioned a few names. Mike McChristian, Robert Harris there. Uh, throughout the entire non-conference schedule, Coach, that, that lineup of yours was really shifting a lot. And then it came into WAC play, and it kind of got settled. Talk about Robert taking that point guard spot and Mike moving from that natural point that he's always played into that off guard spot. Yeah, and what we did was is, is Rob was hurt early in the year, and, and I, I felt all along Rob was probably our most talented point guard. And so once he got back healthy uh, after pulling his hamstring early in the exhibition season, we were able to get him back in the starting lineup. And then Mike had played so well at the point, uh, we needed him on the floor. So we moved him over to the off guard to even play some small forward. Uh, you know, and also plays in the backcourt with, with Connor Hill. So it was just kind of a natural transition. Denzel Douglas has given, given us solid minutes at the backup point guard. So, so I'm real happy with the way the, the, the way the team is progressing. The lineup has changed a little bit. Uh, we've played a little smaller lately uh, with Steven Madison playing at the power forward. But I think that's helped our team offensively as well as defensively. Now we go to Logan. You know, it's, it's a seven-point lead there. A couple minutes left, you guys playing hard. This is an atmosphere you know very well. A, a coach, a team you know very well. In fact, some even say that when you two play, it looks like a mirror image of each other out there. Uh, Preston Medlin, 
preseason player of the year hits that three, sends it into overtime. Talk about that game and uh, and really the emotions after it. Well, that one still sits, sits uh, deep in my stomach because uh, spending 10 years there and, and, and we had them beat, uh, you know, like you said, up seven or eight with four or five to go, whatever it was. And and uh, just not being able to finish it. But you got to give, first of all, our guys battled for, for 40, 40 minutes. Uh, it was unbelievable atmosphere. Uh, we had that game right where we needed to. We, uh, they got the ball with uh, 20 seconds to go, and we don't execute the, the last defensive play. We didn't get the, the big defensive stop uh, that we needed to, uh, to to finish that game. But you got to give Medlin credit. He ends up with 22 points, scores all their points in overtime, hits the big three-point shot. Uh, and. And, you know, that was a tough team to beat. I mean, I tried to take some positives from there, but it's hard to take positives when you lose and lose a game we felt like we had. So uh, hopefully when they come here, we can return the favor. So now we move here, Cal and Spectrum, a couple really tough games. Denver moving into the WAC. Chris Eudofia, fantastic talent. Uh, and then on top of that, New Mexico State, Daniel Mullins, great player, Simbular. If the WAC didn't know him before, they sure know him now, all seven, five of him. Talk about those two games. Uh, again, just tough losses. And also, how much maybe that Utah State loss resonated in the guys' minds coming here home? Well, you hope the Utah State loss didn't do that. Uh, you know, I talk all the time about uh, having a hangover. And, and, you know, we really tried to get the, to get them uh, off that hangover and to get rid of that hangover. But it always carries a, a lasting effect. Denver University is a very good basketball team. They play the Princeton-style offense. Uh, George Scott, uh, uh, Joe Scott is a very, very good basketball coach. And they back cut you. They shoot the three. We did a great job guarding the three. We gave them too many layups. We didn't get the big stop when we needed, you know. And again, another game that we led late in the game and didn't finish the deal. And you, you guys weren't practice today. You saw us working on last, right at the end of practice, working on getting defensive stops at the end of practice. That's the only way I know to get better at it. And then. New Mexico State, same thing. We don't come out with the energy and the emotion we need. They get a 17-point lead. We come roaring back and have a chance to win that ball game. If we get a big defensive stop at the end of the game, then they score. We come down, make two free throws. And then, you know, we didn't execute that very, very last play of the game and come up with a foul, and they end up winning that game in regulation. So uh, I, I, I think our team's getting better. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to go play a real good Louisiana Tech team and a real good Arlington team, but we're, we're moving in the right direction. That's what I keep telling our guys is you got to keep fighting. You got to keep battling. And you know what? Everything evens out. And, and like I told him today is if you just keep battling, things will turn our way. Well, Coach, we're going to go and take a break, fire up that plane. We're heading down to Ruston, Louisiana and Arlington, Texas right after this when Inside the Vandals returns.